Israel is on high alert in the wake of yesterday's terror attack that claimed the lives of four young Israeli cadets and injured 17 others. Joining me to discuss the details of the attack and Israel's security response is lecturer at Bar Ilan University and expert in Middle East affairs, Dr. Mordechai Kedal. Thank you so much for joining me today. Good evening. Uh, so my first question is, let's start with the terrorist Fadi al-Kanbar. Netanyahu made claims that he was a member of ISIS or a follower of ISIS in Israel. Um, are there any veracity to these claims? How do we know that, he, that there's a connection between this attack and that of Nice and Berlin, and that it's not just you know, another spontaneous attack? Well, the government didn't disclose yet all the evidence which the government might have about the connections which this, ma this man might have had with the Islamic State or not. But definitely the modus operandi which he uh, took out this or performed this attack is exactly what was in, in Nice and what was in Berlin, which was taken um, as a responsibility by the Islamic State. So uh, apparently they know something about these connections, communications maybe, uh, with all kinds of activists. And don't forget, he was, once he was in jail, and not for parking in uh, no parking zone. Right. So, okay, so he's also from, we know that he's from Jabel uh, Mukabel, uh, and it's a hotbed of terrorists. We've had a lot of terrorists come out of this village. Um, you know, the village is one of several like it in the Jerusalem area that was gerrymandered after the 1967 war, you know, as, into, into greater Israel. Why, after all of the things that have happened, have, has Israel not extended the security barrier and said, you know, enough is enough, you can be part of the West Bank? Well, don't forget that uh, from the municipal, municipal point of view, they are part of Jerusalem. So we cannot divide, and we don't want to divide right. the city in, in, a, in a war, with a war. Uh, however, there is another question, why these villages are annexed to Jerusalem? Jerem Mukaber and there are others. Uh, the, the, the reason is very clear. In 1967, 50 years ago, when these parts were annexed to Jerusalem, we still carried then the memory of Arabs who, are, who were then in the, in the old city shooting at the western city where Jews were living. I myself wasn't targeted when I was a child in, West, in the western part of the, of the city from somebody who was standing on the city wall of the old city. They missed it. Thank goodness. But... Uh, uh, yes, so Israel wanted to prevent this situation, that nobody can stand on a house on, or, or in his window and shoot at Jerusalem. So Israel actually annexed uh, some villages who are around Jerusalem and can pose a danger on Jerusalem in order to prevent the situation. So, wait, so they annexed this area in order to be able to better patrol it? To better live in Jerusalem uh, and to enable Li uh, people live in Jerusalem without any fear that somebody shoots them from the neighboring uh, neighborhood. All right, so moving on, you know, Israel's response to, to this attack has been increased security, uh, withholding al Kanbar's body, and suggestion to demolish the house. This is all Israeli policy. But, you know, we've tried these methods in the past. How, far, how no, effective I, are they? I, I think that now Israel will take some more measures. Uh, of course, it takes some time. I think that Israel will crack on any infrastructure of Hamas in Jerusalem because we know that the Hamas has some presence in Jerusalem. And uh, apparently Israel didn't want to look at this direction uh, as long as they are, let's say, taking care of uh, needy people, poor people, let them, let them do it, like Dawa. But now maybe the Israel will wipe every a presence of anything which is connected to Hamas and to other organizations. And in my view, the PA is no less uh, problematic in Jerusalem, and they also have to be kicked out because the PA actually was created by Sin in 1993 and should be abolished. So that actually brings me to you know, my next question. Like, moving past defensive measures, what can be done to effectively deter these types of crimes in the future? You know, what's, what's an offensive that we can take to stop all the incitement, to stop, you know, the building of more terrorists. Yes. Well, you have to define between two major situations. One situation is when you have an organization which has members and infrastructure, they have communications, you can penetrate maybe this organization, you can surveil, some, by surveillance, uh, uh, try, try to enter what they want and to forecast what their plans are. And this is one thing. Another thing is when one lonely wolf uh, uh, wants to do something 
drastic. Let, let's say to uh, uh, take his, his, his truck and run over people or stab somebody or shoot at somebody else. This is very hard to detect because he doesn't communicate usually with other people. He doesn't show, he doesn't uh, uh, disclose his, uh, his intentions. And one day when he thinks that uh, the time has come, he takes the weapon or the, or the truck and goes to... The, this is very hard to find. And uh, yes, we have to find ways how to prevent it, like uh, to put all kinds of bold, boulders uh, in places which might be attacked by, uh, by, uh, by, by trucks, as happened already in Berlin and in Nice. And this is the same, the same idea, the same weapon, truck, uh, which we saw in France and we saw in, in Germany. Definitely, uh, it came through the media, through the social media, and of course you can uh, uh, detect some people who say, uh, write on Facebook, for example, that I am willing to be a Shaheed. Uh, these, these people, or some Shaheeds, some terrorists, already said on their Facebook a message which could be uh, well understood if people know Arabic. It could be understood as intention to perform a terrorist attack. If this can be detected, you can catch them in. But that, you know, that's kind of the point. Like here we have Fadi al Kanbal, who, as you said, he was in an Israeli prisoner, uh, in an Once. Israeli prison. He, you know, he should have been on the watch, shouldn't he? You know, we're, we're seeing now reports of his family members are being arrested in connection to the attack and aiding him. Hamas is claiming, is claiming Yes, but he, but he, he, he was working as a truck driver. So I'm going to uh, put a policeman constantly in, in, his, uh, in his car just to make sure that he doesn't uh, run, run over somebody. This is impossible. We trusted him and they, he betrayed the trust. Now, the question is what price people pay, uh, whether personally by demolishing his house or communally, let's say if Israel uh, decides as kind of a retaliation to this attack to annex Malé Edomim, for example, to Israel or to spread the Israeli sovereignty over another part of, the, uh, of, Ju of Judea, uh, Maledumim, for example. This might show them that there is a price to these attacks. And, the, and, the, and the, uh, the more severe the attack is, the higher the price is. So when they understand that the, that the price is too high, they might stop it. So your solution, I mean, you know, how high does the price need to be and, and who's really going to pay that price? Because if, if we annex more cities out of the West Bank, aren't we potentially bringing in more Not cities, terrorists? I didn't talk about cities, or, Jewish cities, means Israeli yeah. cities. I'm not talking about annexing Ramallah or uh, right. Hebron. I'm talking about because these, <clears throat> these places, these cities, Arab cities, should be emirates as a solution. Emirate in Hebron, in the Arab part of Hebron, Emirate in Jericho, Emirate in Ramallah. Every, every city should be an emirate uh, based on the clans of these emirates. This is the only solution which can survive in the Middle East because only the emirates here, states are falling apart as we see in Syria and Iraq. Okay. So this is the situation, this is the solution, the only solution which can be implemented on the ground. Yet Israel can annex more and more rural areas in order to show those terrorists that this is the price of their terror attacks. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kedal, for joining me.